I'm not much of a fan of memorising stuff, you know, and the truth be known, I'm not very good at it. But here are five things that are worth remembering if you happen to be a PHP developer. So the first one, and this is things that you'll use all the time, the first one is string replace. Now I know that there's autocompletes out there, but this is something that you'll use all the time, and I highly recommend memorizing that. Remember what it does, remember how to use it, and all of that stuff. Next one is explode. It's one of those inbuilt PHP things. So this is where we get a large string, let's say some page content or something, or maybe a URL even. And the idea with explode is that we break the thing up. So for example, we could look for forward slashes, let's say, and we could say something like, um, let's say URL segments equals, and we're going to explode, let's say, the page URL or something like that, you know? And that would return an array, okay? So that would be something that's definitely worth memorizing. Almost like the entire TronGate framework is just tons of explosions, okay? If you ever look at the source code, so it's one of these things that you just use all the time and it's well worth memorizing. The third thing that I would say is worth, this font's awful small here. The first third thing I would say that's worth memorizing, in my opinion, would be query binding. Particularly, whoop, oh, that's not a number three, query binding. So in the case of a PHP developer, perhaps doing a select statement with query binding. So that would be something like this. Well, it depends on your actual setup, but if you're using, say, the TronGate framework, then it would be something like this, okay? It would be something like that, and we would pass in some SQL, pass in some params, and then pass in how we would like our data to come back. So the SQL might be something like select all from users, where username equals colon username, for example, the params is just an array, actually. So in this instance, it would be params username equals Joe, something like that. And this here would just usually be something like an object or an array. Now, it may be different for you, depending on your setup, your framework, etc. But whatever it is, learning how to do a select statement with query binding I would say is definitely one of the ones worth memorizing. Now, number four on the list, I would say, still to do with databases, inner table joins. Now, I know that we're not into table joins. I'm not a fan. And sometimes they get a bit confusing. Left joins, right joins, inner, outer, and all of that stuff. In fact, I actually just use software to generate the joins whenever I need those. But inner table joins are kind of special. They appear all over the place. And I think that they really are worth memorizing. They're special. They're not like those other joins, you know. These ones are the ones that you want to memorize. So, for example, imagine we've got a table called users and a table called user levels. Just imagine, okay? And we could do a join something like this. It would be select, and then you would say what you want. So perhaps user's username, perhaps something like that. Perhaps you'd like email, okay. And then you would look at the other table and you'd say, well, what do I want from there? It might be the user levels table, let's say level title, something like that, okay. So you say what you would like to have, and then you would just say from... Okay, users, so so far it's kind of normal. And then comes the magic part. We say inner join. Let me move this up a wee bit, folks. We say inner join. And what are we going to join with? We're going to join with user levels. But what are you going to join on? We're going to join on users.levelid equals user levels.id. I'm just making this up, you know. And then, of course, you would just add in your work conditions. So something like where users.id equals one. 
that's an inner join. Like I say, they appear everywhere and they are worth memorizing. Finally, 86400. This is a very special number for us developers. I use it all the time, almost every single app that I build. And it's just the number that you want to memorize. And uh, if you don't know why, I guess you'll have to just check out the comments. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.